Hey everybody, Joshua Lewis here with The Remnant Radio. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hey, we're doing a quick response today uh, for, from what happened this weekend with John MacArthur and Beth Moore. When John MacArthur made accusations at Beth Moore, what he thinks about her ministry. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this video and you have this great expectation that, that myself and the Remnant Radio crew are going to say, uh, Beth Moore, no more, or we're going to say something like, Beth Moore should quit and stop preaching the gospel, you're going to be thoroughly disappointed. If you're watching this video and you're saying, man, I, I want someone to call John MacArthur to repentance. Let's give him the theological body slam and make sure that he he repents of this action, you're also going to be disappointed. I hope that we can, in this video, come to the discussion with an open mind, uh, maybe come to it being led by the Spirit, requesting that God would maybe give us uh, a self-control and rational thinking as we approach this discussion and maybe see how this conversation is actually speaking to a larger problem in the evangelical community uh, outside of women in ministry. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. Well, I'd first like to begin by saying uh, Beth Moore, as far as I can tell, I'm not familiar with her ministry uh, as well as I am with John MacArthur, but from what I can gather uh, from Beth Moore's ministry is that she is a godly woman, uh, that she fears the Lord, uh, that she is a Christ follower, and she is trying to lead as many people to Jesus as possible. And because of that, I look at her, I believe that she she holds up the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasius Creed. I believe that she believes in repentance by grace through faith alone in Christ Jesus. So I look to Beth Moore and I say, you are a Christian sister. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for your ministry. I'm thankful for your faithful preaching of the gospel. And I look to her and I say, she is a Christian. Thank you so much for that. I look at John MacArthur. John MacArthur, as far as I can tell, I'm a little bit more familiar with his ministry. He's been on uh, Larry King. He's been on CNN. He has been on uh, Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire. All of these are, I mean, if not hostile audiences, certainly non-believing audiences where difficult questions about the gospel gospel have been presented to him. And time and time again, John MacArthur has faithfully presented the gospel in front of hostile audiences and, and audiences that resist the gospel. I, I look at both of these and I say, John MacArthur is a Christian brother. I look at uh, 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 Beth Moore and I say, she is a Christian sister. And, and, and knowing both of those things, it's probably time that we watch the video that's caused all of this stir. So let's jump right into it, okay? Stretches, I will say a word. And then the three of you need to give a one or a pithy response to the word. Are you I feel ready? like I'm being set up. <laughs> that is always the case with Todd. Watch out for him. <laughs> he will try to embarrass you. We're going to start out. This is, this is just kind of touching your toes. Easy, easy setup for you. Let's begin with an easy. Okay, before he asked his easy question, um, uh, the person who was asking the question, if you're not familiar, is a man by the name of Todd Friel. Todd Friel uh, is the host of a show called Wretched Radio. And just like uh, everyone in every theological camp, whether it be Beth Moore or John MacArthur, I disagree with both of them somewhere, right? Uh, because there's not unilateral agreement on every uh, sub-doctrine of theology in Christian culture, right? Todd Friel uh, is a provocateur within Christianity, within evangelicalism, within the Reformed uh, uh, community, uh, the, the community that really John MacArthur belongs to, I, I wouldn't place John MacArthur as a provocateur. Uh, I think that John MacArthur has said incendiary things, uh, pr particularly about the Strange Fire Conference. This is why I believe that we are not dividing the body of Christ in this conference. We are trying to identify the body of Christ and show that these people aren't part of it. I read the book, uh, Strange Fire. I read his book on parables. Uh, I, I read his book on uh, divine design, which is about complementarianism and women in ministry. I've read all of those books, and I thought they were all very well written. Uh, they were all consistent with his hermeneutic. Uh, I believe that he was faithful to preach the text. Uh, and, and when he was critiquing the charismatic movement in the book, Strange Fire, I think he did a very good job. And I, I agree with 90% of what he said in that book, uh, maybe with the exception of some of those continuationist gifts. I believe those are still in function today. Uh, but I think he did a very good job critiquing the charismatic movement on false doctrine. Uh, I think he did a great job critiquing the charismatic movement on the sexual immorality and the, and the lack of policing within our own community. He did a great job, and I think Christians that are in that community should learn from that. So. John MacArthur, again, faithful. Uh, John MacArthur has said incendiary things at the conference, but his books seem to be very well thought out, uh, very careful, and not as incendiary. F Friel, 
Uh, he's known for for a video. I mean, uh, you look at. I mean, he's known for lots of videos, but uh, some of his most popular videos are, uh, uh, you know, uh, a false prophet caught. You know, something to that effect, where where a woman gives a prophecy and calls a man up front, and then he like rebukes her publicly. Or another one uh, where where he gathers around with like uh, a Phil Johnson and a couple other guys at this table at this restaurant, uh, where they proclaim that uh, uh, you know Bethel music is worse than abortion. Uh, Todd Friel is the same guy uh, who says. You know, he's got a title of one of his videos that says, Sorry, Hillsong fans. I mean, uh, the guy is intentionally trying to stir up uh, 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 controversy for the sake of dialogue. Uh, that, that can be, you know, some people uh, are really big fans of that. Some people are not here on Remnant Radio. Uh, we believe in civil discourse. We actually invite people who disagree with us on the show. We don't really debate them. We allow them to present their ideas, and we just kind of judge the ideas as they come. We're not judging the person. We're not criticizing the person. We're allowing their discussion and their thoughts to come forward and try to compare that to Scripture and just believe that the audience uh, is, is full of the Spirit and has a critical thinking and can come to their own conclusions. So we're going to help navigate some of those things as we continue on in the show, but uh, just so you know, the person who's asking these questions is a provocateur and is doing this on purpose. So let's get back into the video, okay? See one. The word is Beth Moore. That's two words. <laughs> Okay, so the audience laughs before John MacArthur ever responds. This is an important note. Uh, uh, John MacArthur has spoken out quite a bit about women in ministry. He's written books on it. He's preached sermons on it. He's condemned people from the pulpit multiple times saying, I disagree with them theologically here. I disagree with uh, this person theologically here, and this is why. And most of the time, he gives a very systematic, logical answer for those things. Uh, what's happening here is this room is charged with controversy. They have an expert expectation that what's about to be said is going to be this pithy one-liner really quick-witted thought that he's going to cut someone down and and honestly I think that John MacArthur takes the bait that he listens to Todd Friel and he and he kind of commits uh, an act of uh, quarrelsomeness in the body of Christ and and let's let's listen to what he says all right Dr. MacArthur Beth Moore how many words do I get you know Actually, and, and before you answer this, please think carefully this time, because last time you did a one-word association, yeah, the guy wrote a book a about it, and we don't want that. I was thinking of the same word. Okay. Go home. <laughs> okay, a couple things there. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that John MacArthur said, uh, you know, like, I, I feel trapped. I, I think that this is going to be a trap coming. Uh, Todd Friel reminds him a similar question was asked to you a couple years ago by Phil Johnson, and it was about uh, uh, Stephen Furtick. He goes, what do, you, what do you think about Stephen Furtick? And his response was unqualified, and it sounds like Stephen Furtick had gone back and rewritten a book on unqualified. Hey, here's, here's the thing. Uh, there, there is a pattern of saying incendiary things and it, hidden under the guise of, well, look, I'm speaking truth, so it doesn't really matter how offensive it is to other people. Uh, I, I, I think this is the first point that we need to kind of bring up in this dialogue as Christians, people are watching. John MacArthur, there is a larger audience than the people in the room. Beth Moore, there is a larger audience than the people in the room. Uh, those of you on Facebook, whether you're defending John MacArthur, whether you're attacking John MacArthur, whether you're defending Beth Moore, whether you're attacking Beth Moore, there is a larger audience. These one statement, pithy, uh, 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 quick qualifiers do not help the body of Christ. We as believers do not need to participate in Twitter theology where we get to uh, attack each other at 140 characters or less. The, 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 the Democratic and the Republican uh, uh, platforms are built on character assassination, the assassination of people and not the assassination of thoughts, right? We as Christians are thinkers. We, we love the Lord God with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, but that mind element is frequently neglected. We have an emotional connection and, and we want to defend, we want to attack, and, and, and on some level, rightfully so, right? We, justice is something that needs to be, to be stood for. And, 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 and both camps right now believe I'm either defending the truth, uh, the John MacArthur camp, we're, we're defending the truth. This is what the Bible says. Uh, the, the other camp, the egalitarian, the Beth Moore camp, who says we need to defend Beth Moore. Uh, uh, that was an egregious thing to say on any platform, no matter what you believe. That was a hateful and hurtful thing to say. So, so let's, let's just, again, let's take a moment. Let's, let's, let's de-escalate the situation and let's say, hey, 
Like we, we need the fruit of self-control because as we're dialoguing about this discussion, there are people watching, Christians, non-Christians, people who are struggling with their faith are watching these discussions and they're saying, look how hurtful and hateful uh, this man can be. And then we are outraged at how hurtful he can be. And we think that if we're even more outrageous than he was, that it will justify his wrong action by our furthering of a wrong action. Uh, we need to disagree agree with his thoughts. We need to disagree with his statements, but we don't need to pull into the character assassination game where, we, where we're mean-spirited at an individual and we, we criticize uh, them as a person instead of criticizing uh, the thoughts by which they hold. So, so if I were John MacArthur, right, and I believed uh, that the case in, in 1 Timothy uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 12, which talks about, you know, uh, uh, women in ministry, the 1 Corinthian text that talks about women in ministry, the Genesis text that talks about Adam and Eve and and some of those gender roles. If I was John MacArthur and Todd Friel had asked me, uh, uh, John MacArthur, what do you what do you think about Beth Moore? I would not have played the game. Right, I would have said, uh, as as a man of God that I believe John MacArthur is, as a man uh, that is very intelligent that I believe John MacArthur is, I think John MacArthur should have said something like, "Well, Todd, I know this isn't going to get the kind of clicks that you want. Um, you know, Beth is a sister in Christ. I believe that she is a godly woman who loves the Lord and is trying to be faithful to Jesus. But as far as I can tell in the Scriptures, uh, and again." he doesn't believe in prophecy, but I would say something to the effect of uh, women can prophesy, women can evangelize, women can lead other women in the scriptures, they can lead their children, they can disciple their homes, but the office of an elder is is exclusive to men, it is for the preaching of God's word and the administrating of church discipline and the directing of God's people. It is an exclusively male role as far as I can see in scripture. Nothing personal to, to Beth, again, love her, think she's a godly woman doing great things for Jesus, but as far as I can see in the scripture, the preaching of God's word on the Lord's day, the administration uh, of church discipline, these are exclusively male roles uh, as far as I can see in scripture. And I think that would have been an appropriate response to say, uh, this is what I believe is true uh, without uh, unnecessarily, uh, uh, I was on the phone with two guys today, right? One guy was like, hey, you're going to do a response on this Beth Moore thing. Uh, you really need to defend Beth Moore. The other guy was like, hey, uh, you really need to defend John MacArthur. And they're both on two different sides of the camp. And I really think as Christians, we need to think more critically about the situation. This is not a pick sides thing. This is the world is looking in to see how are Christians going to respond to this issue? Are they going to get incendiary and verbally violent and aggressive just like the world? Or are they going to display the love that they have for one another and, and coming to disagreement in a godly and loving way? Uh, uh, you know, I had a, bro- a friend of mine, Bruxy, came on the show. He's an Anabaptist pastor. And one of the things, I disagree with Bruxy on atonement theory. It was one of the videos that he came on to talk about. Uh, but one of the things I just loved about Bruxy's presentation of atonement theory, he said something to the effect of uh, the ability to disagree with gentleness and godliness is a unique Christian trait. And as Christians, we need to come to issues like this and display godly character. Beth Moore did this. She saw this comment. She saw these videos. She saw these incendiary statements that were being made from Phil, from Todd. Uh, You you can say that John MacArthur's statement was incendiary. I don't think it was said rightly. I'll say that, okay? Phil Johnson calling Beth Moore uh, egotistic. I think that was silly and incendiary and unnecessary for the conversation. It doesn't prove his point. If anything, all it does is solidify both groups. One group who's trying to say, no, uh, women shouldn't preach and teach and exercise authority and church discipline. That group is just like, oh, way to go. And they solidify. And the other group over here says, oh, I can't believe that they would say that. And they solidify and they no longer begin to think critically. They no longer begin to love each other with the love that Jesus has for us. But no, we, we pick up stones, start hurtling them across and say, how dare this person uh, mar this other person that I love in the Lord. So so again, first thing that we need to do as Christians is, is not play by the rules 
that the world is asking us to play by, not to play by the rules that Todd uh, Friel is asking us to play by, not to play uh, uh, by the rules that the political climate and the socioeconomic climate is asking us to play by. We as Christians need to approach this situation with love, with mercy, and wisdom. And any time we get touched in our feelies about these kinds of theological conversations, what we need to do is ask the Holy Spirit for a restraint and self-control so that we can think uh, in, a, in a timely way and in a careful way. So so let's continue listening, okay? Well, I, I see we're warmed up. <laughs> I dilly dally. Um, there's no case that can be made biblically for a woman preacher. Period. Paragraph. End of discussion. <laughs> okay. And again, much respect for John MacArthur. Um, but period. End of discussion people who, who who aren't privy to that conversation. So like, so if you're watching this right now, when you're trying to figure out, man, what does the Bible teach about women in ministry? We've done a six part series up and in, up into this video and probably will continue on doing more videos on this matter where we've had egalitarians, people who believe women should be in ministry and complementarians who believe that the, the I say women in ministry, that women should be in the role of elder uh, and then complementarians who say that, that women uh, uh, should not facilitate the role of elder, but have a plurality of ways that they can exercise their gifts within the body of Christ, right? So so that conversation on who gets to be an elder, egalitarian, yes, complementarian, no, as far as the, the women uh, discussion for eldership. So, so, so this is really interesting. We've done six episodes on this. What I would do if someone asked me this question is you can really find out a long, detailed, careful, thoughtful explanation by going to that playlist. But instead, he plays the game and gives a one word response. If Beth Moore was asked the same question about John MacArthur, you know, I think Beth Moore would say, no, I'm not going to play the game. Uh, she exhibited that by her Twitter comment when she said that John MacArthur is a brother and she extended that grace and gratitude to him that she disagreed with him and that, that Christ had called her into this ministry and she doesn't need his his word for approval on that. And I, I kudos to Beth Moore, way to go. You're displaying godly character to the people who are around you, the people who are following you, the unbelievers, the atheists, the, the Christians who are struggling with their faith, the other Christians who, who are solid in their faith. They're looking at you and saying, wow, when she was being persecuted, she showed grace and mercy and humility back. Might us all as Christians follow in her stead. Let's continue listening. Let me see if I can get a clarification on that. Got one. Phil, anything to add? No, I, the word that comes to my mind is narcissistic. I, I think the first time I saw her, I thought, she, she is, this is a, going back to the last session of what Mike said, this is what it looks like to preach yourself rather than Christ. All right. And she, in uh, fact, she has said that. She said, I read the Bible and I try to find myself in the narrative. I put myself in the narrative. And that, that is exactly what she does. So that, that person uh, was Phil Johnson who kind of gave his two cents. Anybody else have an opinion on this? Phil Johnson spoke up and said, hey, this is what I think. Um, uh, narcissistic is what he said. So uh, again, as Christians, uh, this is an unnecessary uh, conflation. I think we we can say I disagree with the way that she reads the text. I can I disagree with her hermeneutic in this area uh, of, of looking at the scriptures and trying to read herself into the scripture. It's actually a very common practice in evangelicalism. Um, I think that it's appropriate that when a person is preaching false doctrine to actually name them. I know there's a lot of people out there who really don't feel like this is an appropriate thing to do, but but we see it in the Bible, right? Like we see Paul who's who's telling his disciples like, hey, watch out for that coppersmith. Like that dude took advantage of me. That dude's wrong. He's naming people by name in the book of First Corinthians and Second Corinthians. Like he's dealing with church discipline in a very public way in front of the whole congregation. Uh, there's a guy out there by the name of Mike Winger, uh, the Bible thinker. He is awesome at this. He does a great job at looking at the issue and not looking at the person and saying anytime that this issue is proclaimed, uh, this is wrong and this is error. Now, now this person, man, I really like them. I think that they're a great person. Uh, uh, I think that they're wrong in these areas. He would be one that said, this is a heretical teaching and this person should stop teaching this. I think they've got the best motivation and the best heart, but man, please repent. Don't keep doing this. And he names them by name, but he does it with a gentle and meek spirit. So go ahead, go over there, subscribe to his channel. Uh, and that will kind of maybe give you an expectation of what is, what is Christian? Christianity look like when Christians approach a topic and say, man, we, we need to disagree with this in a godly way. I'd say Mike Winger's at the top of my list. Uh, he does a great job. Let's keep listening. I heard John MacArthur say period, paragraph, end of story. <laughs> Flips. I would just add one thing. Um, just because you have the skill to sell jewelry on the 
TV sales channel doesn't mean you should be preaching. There are people who have certain hawking skills, um, natural abilities to sell. They have energy and personality and all of that. Um, that doesn't qualify you to preach. Dr. McCarthy. That's probably, if, if you're going to ask me, um, Josh, was the go-home statement wrong? Yeah, yeah, I think it was wrong. I know what he was trying to communicate. He's trying to play the game. Um, but I think that one was the worst. Um, I, I think that he's claiming that that Beth Moore's qualification, that she thinks her qualification is wrapped up in her ability to communicate. Um, that's silly. I think that would be the equivalent of, of someone looking at John MacArthur and saying, oh, John, you're only doing this because, you know, you could be a sports announcer. That's stupid. Um, the People who are egalitarian, who believe that women should facilitate the role of an elder, um, those women are Bible-believing, gospel-believing uh, uh, Christians who are trying to understand the scriptures to the best of their ability. And we will never have rational discussions honoring and loving one another if we don't expect the best out of each other. Um, I think that, that that was the worst statement made, in my opinion. Uh, I think that it it assumes Beth Moore's intention that, oh, because I'm gifted in speaking publicly, therefore I get to be a pastor. No, I, I don't think that's Beth Moore's uh, uh, approach to uh, her ministry, and I don't think that's an approach that any woman would take uh, when they're handling God's word. Uh, you know, again, speaking of the playlists that we've done in the past, we've had uh, Katya Adams on the show. We have had uh, 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 Tracy Eckert on the show. We've had uh, Craig Keener on the show that are all egalitarians. We've had Jeff Jenkins on the show who is egalitarian. And all of these people that I have met, and I know personally, are not people who are trying to manipulate the text and contort the text to do whatever they want and, and to make sure that they can they can practice their life however they want to practice their life. And they're just going to, they've got these evil, maniacal people who are trying to twist God's word. That is not any of those people. They have a hermeneutic. They have a consistent hermeneutic, and they're trying to apply it to the text. I am actually on the other side of that camp. I would consider myself a complementarian. I would say that women hear from God. They get prophecies. They, they can heal the sick. They can raise the dead. They can speak in tongues. They can, they can do mighty miracles. I'm all for that stuff. They can, they can lead small groups and home groups, and they can teach in seminaries. They can, they can do phenomenal. There's nothing wrong with their ability to teach, their rationale, their leadership. I've said this in all of the videos that we have done. That being said, I'm still a complementarian. And as a complementarian, I look at these women with integrity and trust, expecting that they are not trying to manipulate God's word. And I think that the statement that John MacArthur made, that because you're gifted, you think that you get to preach God's word, um, I think that's silly. And I think that that no one is making that claim, and you're building up a straw man for the sake of the audience. Um, and, and and I think that was wrong. But again, uh, all of us as Christians, we should, we should expect that we're going to say something wrong. Right, I've got I've got a theology podcast, and I've been doing it for the last two years, and I have said things that I wish I can scrub. And thanks for the technology of YouTube, I can. All I'm saying is that we can say things that are correct, but not say them correctly. And as Christians, I want to fight for truth, but I also want to deliver that truth the way that Jesus would do it. I hope that this video can actually help us in how we dialogue with one another. Can we have honest uh, conversations with integrity, loving one another, treating each other with the respect that we want reciprocated toward us? Uh, I hope that this video has been beneficial to you. Moving forward, uh, be blessed, and we'll see you next time on Remnant Radio. Uh, and if you want to know more about this conversation, like I said, uh, where, where's, where's an open space? There's the playlist for you right there. You can go watch that.